Hello everyone, it's Cassie and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I'm out of breath, I just walked up the stairs with a bunch of books. Today's video is going to be a wrap up slash a recent reads because I did not do a wrap up in August or for August. I don't really have a full reason why. September was just kind of a lot. This is going to be my wrap up for August and September, so it's kind of like a recent read. I've got some really good books here to talk about. I think we've had like a pretty good couple of months, last probably three months of reading. I've had really good months, so I'm really excited to talk to you guys about all of these books. It's probably going to take a little bit longer than usual because it's two months in one, but that's okay. Let's just grab a snack, grab a drink, and get comfortable. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and give it a big thumbs up. Both of those would mean the absolute world to me. Comment down below what you read in August and what you read in September. Catch me up since I'm behind. And if you've read any of the books that I read in these two months, let me know your thoughts on them as well. My Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, and Amazon wishlist will be linked in the description box below if you're interested. And make sure to turn on post notifications so you never miss an upload from me. So let's get into this wrap up. Also, make sure to check out my August reading vlog and my September reading vlog when they come out because they'll be probably more in depth, maybe, I don't know. But make sure to watch those because you can see my first reactions from reading these books. The first book I read in August was The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. If you don't know, I read The Maidens in July and that has become one of my favorite books, um, I think. It's really high up there. I really, 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 really enjoyed it. So I had to pick up The Silent Patient. Yeah, I gave this five stars. Kind of feels like it should be 4.5 stars. I have the um, unpopular opinion that The Maidens is much better than the... I shouldn't say much, but I enjoyed it a lot more than The Silent Patient. That may be due to... I've heard people's theories while they're reading this book and then some of their theories ended up being correct and so then it kind of didn't feel as crazy. It was still like a great twist. It just wasn't as like mind-boggling, I guess you could say, just because I already had someone's theory in the back of my mind. I, didn't e I don't think I would have thought of the theory myself, so that kind of... I don't want to say wrecked it, but it just brought it down. I just really like how he writes and he'll be an automatic buy for me in the future whenever he has a book come out. I thought it was better, but I know a lot of people didn't even like The Maidens and a lot of people just didn't like it as much as The Silent Patient, but that's just the opposite for me. Um, the atmosphere of The Maidens was just... Like, the difference of how he created an atmosphere from this one to The Maidens is crazy. Yeah, this isn't, like, my favorite book ever, but I would recommend it, of course. Like, I gave it five stars, so it's good. The next book I read in August was The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson. Gave it a 4.5 stars. This is the second book in the Truly Devious trilogy, main trilogy. This was super fun and just, like... A good YA mystery. I will say I've had really high hopes for this trilogy just because every time I ever since I started watching booktube this has been a trilogy that has been so hyped and like being the YA mystery slash thriller. Personally I've read ones that I think are better than this trilogy but I still really enjoyed this like it was still really really good and um there was like a lot of revelations throughout this book. This was where you were kind of just putting everything together. I thought I'd go into this because I knew a lot of people didn't like David and I was like I'm gonna be different than everyone because no one likes David. I'm gonna like him. I don't like him. He is such a whiny little baby. Uh, I don't like him and so I'm upset. The only reason I bring it down and didn't put it five stars is it took me a bit to get into but I honestly have been noticing the past couple months that pretty much any book that I read it takes me a bit to get into so I haven't found many books that grip me from the very beginning. I would recommend this YA mystery series but it's not just this so perfect thing. That was the impression that I got from people talking about this series 
so it was just the tiniest bit of a letdown but like I still really enjoyed it, so I don't want you to think I hated it. Then the next book I read in August was Not a Happy Family by Sherry LaPena. Every time, I don't know how to say her last name, so. This is about, I guess I didn't really tell you what the last two are about, but like I feel like pretty much everyone knows what they're about. This is about a rich family in Brecken Hill, upstate New York. It's Fred and Sheila Merton. They're super rich. They are murdered the day after Easter. They're found murdered. And then they have three kids that obviously have a lot to gain by their parents dying because they are mega rich. So it's mostly just like a suburb type of mystery thriller, which is what a lot of her books are. And I really enjoy them, but I gave this one a 3.5. This was just like not up to what I expect from her. I've read um, The End of Her, Someone We Know, and The Couple Next Door. So I haven't read, I think there's two other books from her. I haven't read those, but this was, out of the ones I've read, this is definitely my least favorite one. It just was like, ending wasn't that surprising. I don't know, I just didn't really like how the, it was played out, like how they're pointing fingers at one person like the whole entire time. I just, I didn't really like this and I know a lot of people were really disappointed by this book. I got it at like as soon as it came out and I read it in like, one or two days but that's not necessarily because I was super enjoying it it was because I wanted it to get better and um, I wanted to get to the end I would say if you're reading her books skip this one go to the couple next door or the end of her I really I like someone we know as well but any of those three I would recommend way before I would recommend this one and the ending of this like ending ending after we find out who did it didn't overly love either it was just kind of weird and then there were some characters that just didn't you were supposed to root for them I think but they were just like you could not root for them they were so unlikable like so unlikable most of the characters in this book were unlikable so it just wasn't it wasn't the greatest um I do love me the decal edges though but yeah, I'm pretty disappointed because I was. This is one of my most anticipated releases for the year because I've read multiple of her books and really enjoyed them, and this just fell sh fell short, unfortunately. Um, if you like her writing, her writing isn't necessarily bad. It's just the story that I don't really like. Then I read the Final Girls Support Group by Grady Hendrix for Mel Reed's Patreon Book Club. I don't ever know what to call it. It's categories categorized as horror and it is about a bunch of final girls so i don't know why i just screamed it's about a bunch of final girls it plays off of tropes from movies like horror movies and slashers and how there is always a final girl at the end who survives and kills or gets the murder arrested there's always one girl left standing so this book is about them and their support group and as one of them dies what unravels after that because they soon believe that someone's coming after them. First of all, I love the cover. I think it's so pretty. <laughs> Mostly follow Lynette. For me, I didn't really find it horror. I was pretty scared to read this at certain points because I was like, oh, I don't want to read it before bed because I'm going to be really scared. But it was more of a thriller to me, which is fine. I was a little bit excited about it being horror because I don't really dabble in horror very much but it thriller is like my favorite genre so it's not like I was very disappointed at all this book also does have a mixed media type of stuff notes from the psychologist and stuff from online and so for me this was again a book that took a bit to get into um, but I think I, I feel like I read this decently fast. This is my first Grady Hendrix, but I am reading another one this month, so I'm very excited about that. But I didn't really know what to expect from his writing or anything. This is why it wasn't very horror for me. It was because nothing that scary happened for most of the book, or that, like, thrilling happened for most of the book. So that's one thing. And, um, one of the bad guys didn't really even make sense. Um... Also, this is more on me, but 
there is supposedly a bunch of references to a lot of horror films and a lot of slashers and stuff in this book that I just didn't pick up on but I know Mel even said I'm pretty sure that she didn't pick up on a lot of them either and she really she watches a lot more horror than I would so there's that so those are just some parts that like lost me that brought it down but I did really enjoy it I think it was a really good idea then the final book that I read in August was People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I gave this one 4.5. The reason why I think you could guess is it took me a long time to get into it. I did not really enjoy it that much at the beginning. It was just like meh. It's fine. I'd probably say a hundred pages in. I can't really exactly remember. I started really enjoying it and I thought it was super super cute and honest that's literally the reason that it got bumped down from a five is just purely based on that first bit just was like kind of boring for me. So I understood I've heard either you love it or you don't really like it that's the kind of reviews i've heard and i understand why people didn't really like it because the beginning is pretty slow and some of the stories got really drawn out and they just didn't need like from past summers that i feel like they didn't overly need that much description but it was okay the dynamic if you don't know what this is about it's about poppy and alex and they have been best friends for a really long time but and they went on vacations every single summer but there was an incident two summers ago and they haven't gone on a vacation together since and you don't know what the incident is until really close to the end of the book so you're going in between this summer where poppy decides to invite alex on a final maybe a final vacation to try and work things out or just figured out that they're not gonna work out anymore so it switches between the summer and past summers when they went on vacation and you just see how their friendship has flourished throughout the years if they fall in love but i really enjoyed this so i was very happy that i was on the side of people that really liked this um because i would have been sad if i didn't like it i think it's super cute and i am excited to read a beach read probably will wait until next summer unless i need a little bit of um summer in my life throughout the winter we definitely would recommend this okay so those are all the books that i read in august i feel like i had an overall really really good reading month so i'm very happy with that so let's move on to what i read in september because i also had a really really good reading month this month the first book that I picked up in September was The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson, which was the final book in the Truly Devious main trilogy. There is a fourth book within the world, but this is the final book in the trilogy. The next book is The Box in the Woods. I'm gonna read that eventually. I'm just like also trying not to buy a bunch of books. You won't believe me because I have a haul coming that's huge, but I'm trying not to buy as many books. I gave this a four stars. I think it was a cute ending to a trilogy, but I will say not that much happens for most of this book and mostly not that much happens to to do with the mystery element. It's a lot of just build up to the ending and um, I didn't really enjoy that so that brought it down for sure. And also we definitely got a lot of the revelations within the first or within the second book um which is fine but it just didn't leave that much for this book there still are revelations in this book and you still are surprised but it's just um not as crazy because you found out so much within the second book but you find out more about the other mysteries of students dying on campus um so that's interesting as well overall i enjoyed the trilogy it's not my favorite ya mystery but i would recommend it for sure i am looking forward to reading the fourth book in this series and i think this could be a really good series um that like it could last for a really really long time because it's just about a young girl who is into true crime and detective work so this could last forever and i would be okay with it i think it had a good ending to the main mystery that this series was built upon i really like the group of characters um i still don't really like david in this book but i heard he's a lot better in the box in the woods so there is that that's all my thoughts <laughs> 
I believe for Bookopathon, this was The Prompt Humans. The next book I picked up in September was Sadie and I, by Courtney Summers. I also listened to the audiobook as I read along because I had heard amazing, amazing things. So if you don't know what Sadie is about, it is about Sadie and she has gone missing because after her sister Maddie was murdered, she went to go find who murdered her and take matters into her own hand. So she has been missing for a few months. So her neighbor, because her mom had left, her neighbor had called in the help of, well, what's his name? Wes McRae. It has Sadie's perspective and then it also has Wes's perspective as he's doing a podcast. And that is the part that you really should listen to on audio. I will say I didn't really like the voice of the Sadie part so I would read that by myself and then I would listen to Wes slash the podcast episodes on audio because I just I don't think I'm an audio girl I just don't think I am I'm gonna try it out more but to me I just I'm, I'm not that's my not my thing but yeah I gave this a 4.5 the last episode of the podcast was really really good heartbreaking for sure this was for the book off the thon prompt becca rack and it was definitely a really good recommendation i had heard many 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 good things about this book before but she also really liked it the mystery was just like really good how it unraveled and the different part of sadie's journey to finding who killed her little sister was just really enjoyable and it gave the book a lot of different layers i will say there's some horrid stuff in this book so definitely look up trigger warnings because yeah there's some really serious topics in this especially because i'm pretty sure this is ya so like that's a little crazy not crazy but like I don't know that's it's some heavy topics so definitely look up trigger warnings before you read this but I really really enjoyed it and would definitely recommend it and its audiobook I don't know if you get the full effect without the audiobook but if you don't like Sadie's chapters just skip them I, would, <laughs> I really enjoyed it by its like in itself but I don't know if I would have gave it 4.5 without the audiobook for the podcast because you don't it just sounds so much more real with that in element. I was really behind in my reading this month and then I caught up in the last little bit but so next I read Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is one I have been really 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 wanting to read book Bookopathon. This was for a chance card and I'm so happy I finally got to read it. I considered this a thriller or like a mystery but it's so so much more than that like it's very there's a lot of contemporary driven topics and stuff in this i heard before i read this that like you wouldn't guess the twist and those people were correct i really had some i was like i always guess the twist like i'm really good with guessing twists but this one I'll... never would i have got the big 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 thing i guess some little parts of twist but not the big twist now knowing how it ends i would definitely reread reread this book there's not a lot of books that i super want to reread just because i have so many books that i haven't read that i own and also just in general so i don't really think about rereading but this one i would for sure reread i think it's kind of like necessary after reading it the first time and finding out the twist just because it would a lot of things would make more sense and I think I could even enjoy it even more. I gave it a four stars just because some of the parts I didn't understand the first time reading it but after I, we found out the revelations and the twist it made a lot more sense but I just didn't fully understand it. But I really enjoyed it and I would really recommend and I'm so happy I finally got to read it. It's another YA book that also you should look up the trigger warnings for because it's got some heavy, heavy topics in this as well as you move along throughout this story. Like I would 1000% recommend it to anyone. Blackout by Danielle Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, Nick Stone, Andy Thomas, Ashley Woodfolk, and Nicola Yoon. This was for Feed Scroll on Bookopoly. This was so stinking cute. Um, I gave it 4.5 stars. 
I adored this book. I think it's so cute and I read it in less than 24 hours. I like I read it in a day, 12 hours probably. Um, I just thought it was so stinking cute. My favorite stories were definitely Timmy D. Jackson's, which was called The Long Walk. Mask Off, love that one. Mask Off by Nick Stone. Beautiful, that one was so freaking cute. And Made to Fit by Ashley Woodfolk. Those three were my favorite three, but I enjoyed every single one. I think they were super, super cute. And I've never read a book like this. I've never read a like anthology type of book, but I would 1000% recommend this. It's really easy to read. It's really enjoyable to read. It's just so stinking cute. These are all stories during in New York during a blackout and they're all these teen love stories they're just stinking adorable and just beautiful and they also are just super inclusive and have a lot of different type of relationships within these this book so that's really fun as well and they all have this type of it's not a huge part of the story but it was fun for me that they're all sort of interconnected in some way it's mostly through this one character, but I really, really enjoyed it, and I thought it was super cute. If you ever watch the movies Valentine's Day and New Year's Eve, it's kind of those type of ideas. I really liked those movies, especially Valentine's Day, where you find out that these characters know each other somehow. And I think it's really fun because even love stories can glow when the lights go. Then the final book that I read in September was Malibu Rising which I was supposed to read in August and I did start reading it in August but I had to continue reading it in September and I just didn't want to pick it up for a really long time so it has obviously is the last book that I read in September like I said sorry if the angle changed I literally just finished reading Malibu Rising not even two minutes ago finished Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid um this is actually my first book from Taylor Jenkins Reid I know, crazy. I don't fully know what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna give it. I think 3.5 to 4. It was good. Again, it took me a really long time to get into it. Um, like I mentioned, I started reading this in, at the end of August and it just wasn't like pulling me in. And so I stopped reading it at the beginning of September and I just picked it up a couple days ago. I also was a little misinformed because I definitely thought this was more just a like, I thought like 75% contemporary and 25% mystery, but like there was a mystery at all. It was literally, because it says something about, this is about, if you don't know, I guess I should say this, the children of Mick Riva, who is in um, The Seven hu Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and the children of him and their story throughout the years from when their parents met to 1983, which is when the main story of this is into these siblings have a infamous party at, at the end of every summer where a bunch of famous people come and like it's just like a crazy party and so that's what we're building up to is the night of that and throughout the story we read what is happening building up to the party and we know at the end of the party at 7 a.m the house is up in flames so i thought that was more mystery by midnight the party will be completely out of control by morning the reva mansion will have gone up in flames but before that first spark in the early hours before dawn the alcohol will flow and the music will play and the loves and secrets that shape this family's generations will all come rising to the surface i don't know why i just thought it had like the the fire like how the fire started was like a huge like mystery which it was like how did it start like you want to know but i thought it was like a bigger deal so yeah i really enjoyed it i think it was a f good story and it was like fun looking i didn't normally like looking at dual t timelines i think i enjoy that but this one i enjoyed it way more once um we caught up with real time build up and like the past flashbacks had a lot of details that didn't overly need to be in it and also there was parts like characters in this book that they got like pages every once in a while that the story could have just been fine without them because I couldn't remember who half of them were they would just be like I don't remember any of their names but this isn't a character but like Eric Eric did this and I'm like who who's Eric again like I don't remember there's lots of random people in there so that's one thing that I didn't overly love about it but 
overall was a good book and I definitely will pick up more of her book but yeah that was the last book for September I technically finished it today's October 1st but I'm excited to get to my October TBR if you liked this wrap up slash recent reads let me know let me know if you want me to continue to do wrap ups every month which i normally would do or if you want me to do like one every other month if you like this video make sure to subscribe and give it a big thumbs up both those would mean the absolute world to me make sure to comment down below what you read in august and september and what you thought of them and if you've read any of the books in this long video let me know what you thought of them my instagram twitter goodreads and amazon wishlist will be linked in the description box below if you're interested make sure to turn on post notifications so you never miss an upload from me and i will see you in my next video bye